call the meeting to order. We have the motion moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Jacobson. Resolved that the agenda for the June 19th, 2018 regular meeting council be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Delore, by the looks of the right hand. Colonial Memorial. Second by Councillor Jacobs and resolve the minutes of the June 5th, 2018 regular meeting council be adopted and received. Discussion? In favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, we're going to move the delegation up on the agenda and we'll take Bruce and the honor of financial statements that come after. So uh, we have a delegation uh, from Brittany Faluk and others uh, for the proposal of an early learning center daycare. Welcome to our council meeting and just turn it over to you. Thank you. I'm Brittany Fluke, and this is Arlo Whitmire, and this is Caitlin Sutherland. Uh, we are here on behalf of the Bozeman Early Learning Center. Um, I don't know if you've heard or saw the announcement in the paper that we received a significant amount of money to start a daycare in the Bozeman School from the provincial government. Um, we are one of the three centers in Manitoba to receive the money outside of Winnipeg. And so we obviously want to take advantage of this and be able to proceed. And we got the amount as the 60% funded instead of the 40% funded. A lot of the daycares are only 40% funded, but Rick Wojcik was able to lobby on behalf of us and get us up to the 60. Which, when I tell you the amount of money that it's going to cost to build this daycare, makes 60 sound a whole lot better than 40 because the daycare quote is close to $400,000 to renovate the school into the new daycare center. Um, I have a schematic of the new Bozeman Baker Center. And council has a copy of that? Yes. Okay. If you want to have a look at it. and uh, It just shows the proposed renovations to the school. Um, that assumes that absolutely every single square inch needs to be redone. Since then there's been talk that maybe we don't have to redo the entire floor or some of the existing roof is fine and doesn't have to have sound um, barriers, etc. So some of the costs should be reduced. We're just awaiting um, a meeting with the daycare coordinators next week to get some approvals on whether or not some of this money necessarily has to be spent. Same with maybe we don't need marble countertops, maybe we can just go with, I'm just kidding, but seriously, <laughs> the, the kitchen coat is like $40,000 for the daycare and I like, the idea is to maybe use IKEA cabinets if that will suffice the standards. So, so we've been to the Manitoba Bozeman um, RM, and they have graciously um, agreed to donate fifty thousand dollars to us over a four-year period, um, and they are also going to give us ten thousand dollars of work to dig in the water. We have to get our own separate kitchen area for the kids for in the daycare and so we have to trench in water to the to the classroom space. So they're going to give us ten thousand dollars worth of work in kind I suppose. We've also been to the RM Swan Valley West and are awaiting whether what their proposed projected amount of what they're going to be able to give us is. The last I heard is from Councillor Bjork that they're working on doing something over a four-year term. They just haven't said what that magic something is until their next council meeting, which I think is next week. So, and we have yet to meet with the Arm of Mountain. Um, their meetings are at 10 o'clock in the morning, so that's kind of a tricky one when everybody works full time to get there. So we certainly intend upon getting there, but it's uh, a little tricky. So. And then the school, we have. Tim, who graciously has come along with us tonight, um, they're letting us use the space in the school, well, like for as cheap as you can go, with no snow clearing, no, you know, all the costs of that we have to own our own center, you have to endure. The school will be able to look after those for us, and they've agreed to rent us the space at $100 a month, so that's why he's here. He's our team backup. So I don't know if anybody has any, any questions. Any councillors have any questions? Councillor Sackle. It's the square footage of those two rooms or the area that you're going to have. It maybe says on the blueprint, but it's kind of fuzzy on our side. Yeah, it's a, it's a little over 1,100 square feet. 
basically two good sized classes. And, and they'll also have access when they do after school programming. They'll have access to other rooms if they want, you know, four o'clock or whatever time. Other daycares in the school will have kind of the same same arrangement. Council White, how many students, children will this involve? So there'll be four infant spaces, so that's for any children under two. Then there'll be eight preschool spaces, so that's from two until five. And then there's space for 15 children before and after school, which is just about as, a, as wonderful of a thing in the idea that a lot of kids can't attend the Bozeman school because their parents work in Swan River and there's no daycare in Bozeman and so their child has to go to daycare in Swan and then enroll in, Swan, in school in Swan River. There's roughly 20 children get on the bus in Swan River or in Bozeman that go to school elsewhere that aren't able to attend. I'm not saying everyone will go to the Bozeman school after, but... What a compliment to you and your team. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilor Deloria. What, I guess maybe this is more for Mr. Mandel, but what kind of guarantee can the, and I know there's no guarantees in life, but can the school division provide? I mean, obviously, uh, Minnetonist earlier being prime example, there's no guarantee that having a daycare ensures the long-term viability of a school. Sinking 400 grand into a, into a school that may close in two or three years, I, I guess, where, 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 what's the school position on, on Bozeman School? Yeah, it, it's hard to say. I mean, I think when we did community consultations, uh, our goal is to keep schools open and viable, and we're looking for ways to do that. This is one of the ways that we think eliminate some of the issues that we have with school of choice, where people are saying, well, I, you know, I, I need after school care because. So the hope is that it, it would. Um, I know of one other school that I was involved in in Kenton where the school was closed and the daycare still operates. Uh, I don't think daycare, daycares uh, in all the ones that I've been involved with formerly in, in Park West, uh, I think there's six or six or seven in the schools. They're all kind of small like this, some bigger. Uh, all of them have remained viable and it doesn't seem to matter if the school enrollment uh, people drive to get to get daycare. I mean, your town daycare has got a waiting list of 20, 25 people. So, people want daycare. They 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 drive for it. In terms of the school, uh, I'd say politically, it's probably harder to close a school when there's a daycare in it. Uh, to be honest, it's not impossible, but but uh, it doesn't happen. So. Uh, I don't know that school division, I mean, obviously we can't make a long-term long -term commitment, but I'd be fairly confident that the daycare will be there for quite a while. I, I, I just think that the valley as a whole, you have no daycare that is not full and doesn't have a way to work, so. Councilor DeLore, um, Councilor White. On your, you, you talked about how many spaces you have. You have uh, on your waiting list, do you have, will you guys be full in your first year operation, I guess, based on your waiting list? So this is the, this is just the immediate surrounding area of who has children that could attend the daycare. Uh, you look for a daycare would be half full just with board member kids alone. Like, right. There's a lot of demand. Councilor White. I think uh, at another meeting you alluded to that being a significant economic development for the town of Swan River also. Could you elaborate on that please? Well, obviously uh, the ongoing grant, say for example Benito Daycare, they annually get a grant of about $95,000 to $100,000 to operate it right from the government ongoing year over year. Well, the Bozeman one will get a bit more because they, they'll have the four infants off the bat, so it'll be about a hundred thousand, I'll say, which will be a provincial grant every year to operate that daycare. Well, where will those people? So it'll employ four people. Where will those people shop? Uh, you know, I don't have a lot of shopping in in Bozeman. Where will that? Where will that money go? It will go into businesses in the community here. I would also expect that uh, there's probably currently some people in Bozeman using 
space in uh, in the daycares in town here, and so the potential of freeing up some spaces so that the town folks can have access better currently on, on the waiting list is, is the other thing. But in terms of the economics, I mean, people want to shop in the valley, where do they do that? They, they come to here. And uh, so it's the 260 initially, it's the provincial contribution. And then what people have to remember is there will be a, the ongoing $100,000. $100, so it's a pretty significant provincial contribution to add eight spaces and, and after school. And, and the infant is usually the one that people really grab. Yeah. Anything over four, and the reason they go with four is if you go more than four, you need a sprinkler system, so that's, and that's big money, so that's why schools tend not to have a <coughs> Councilor Jacobson. So uh, you said this project was going to cost, what was the total cost of the project? Uh, 400000 is the original quote, but we haven't got to the point of being able to actually tender it out to other okay. people. And then you're asking, you said you met with some of the other municipalities already, yeah. you're asking the equal amount of money from each of those municipalities? I, I would hope that Swan Valley West will give us the same as the Manitoba Bozeman because, I mean, basically on the other side of the highway, well, the two of us have children on in Swan Valley West. So, for instance, if half of our board has half in Swan and half in Manitoba, then I would hope that we'll both both of them will give us much. I don't think that um, RM Mountain probably will be able to give the same and not as many children will be directly impacted as they are in the two immediate surrounding areas. Councilor White. Two points. Uh, I'm not sure all those people live out there, but I suspect just as many live in Spun Valley West as Minnetonas Bozeman, so I would be tracking those parents down to talk to the counselors in Swan Valley West. And from the point of interest in our recruiting uh, medical doctors and medical professionals, constantly the question is, do you have daycare? Do you have daycare? So if we want to recruit any professional, any person to our community, daycare uh, possibilities is really important. I think just a, a comment about that, I, I, about what should people contribute. I, I think I recognize that this is a little bit of a new area for our ends, right? Uh, just like it is for schools. Uh, let's head at the G5 meeting. You know, 10 years ago, schools really wanted no part of it, and then slowly, uh, there, there is certainly a, an understanding more and more for communities that daycare is becoming an essential service. If you want your families to come, uh, if you want jobs, and especially f for us, uh, teaching life, uh, the teaching profession has be, become more female, uh, more female teachers uh, than male teachers, uh, and great that we have not leaves uh, and uh, so and we have some challenge recruiting teachers to come rurally and so we we really don't want people to take four or five years off if they're a teacher raising a family we want them back either part-time or something because it is hard to get teachers to come sort of think outside so that's kind of our interest as well, uh, just for our own staff to have access to quality to quality daycare. You talked about the, the, the hospital. I know f the other piece, I guess, is how much should you contribute? I mean, uh, everyone's got budgets, and uh, you know, probably the most should come from Minnetona Bozeman, and whatever you would contribute would be great. I know it's a little bit, the daycare isn't in your, you know, in your town. So politically, for you, that's. Uh, but I do think economically, you can make that argument pretty easily. And I guess the other piece too, just politically, is, you know, there stuff that has been built in town here where other RMs have contributed. This time it's the other way. So it's just a little goodwill and sort of all of us working together for the interests uh, of the valley is is a is a big is a big piece because big projects being built in the future new arenas new whatever i mean where are they going to be built uh so you want to be able to go to your neighbors and remind them 
uh, kind of what you did. I also know that for you as a council, the challenges you do have a daycare that, uh, you know, not the school one, but the other one that kind of took a mortgage and, is, and it, it, it didn't contribute to it. So how do you justify contributing to another one that's in uh, another town? I, I don't know if they ever asked you. Uh, so I, I, that would be part one. Part two, uh, times change. Uh, you know, 10 years ago, school boards weren't interested. Now they are. And I guess part three is, in life, it's always good when you get a do-over. So as a council, you get to have a do-over. <coughs> I, I, I think we, whatever contribution, I, I do think, um, you know, the provincial government has done a big step going from 40 to 60. I think our local MLA has done a, a good job of advocating on our behalf. He's got 60% of the funding, plus the ongoing. Uh, I think it's up to the school division and the four other RMs to come across with the other 40. Uh, I mean, he can only do so much, the rest is kind of up to us. Uh, and I think between the four RMs and uh, and the school division, we should be able to drag this across the fence line if we want to. Any other questions or comments? Or comments? If not, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Council will discuss it, and in the near future, I can't give you an exact time, but we will get back to you with a response. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for your time. to the audited statements. So we're starting with the expenditure report on the gas tax, correct? Yep. So we have the only expenditures were uh, $5,200 for under the category of local roads. That was some sidewalks that were constructed and just under $59,000 for wastewater, which is in uh, Sixth Avenue West uh, storm sewer. So I don't see any resolutions here to approve these. They're, um, they're under other resolutions, so they'll be uh, further down. Any questions, Council? Started the, the balance at the start was ninety thousand. Received two hundred thirteen from the province on interest. And the split expenditures leads to forty-one thousand not spent at the end of the year available for future projects. And just under cumulative since the federal gas tax program came in, the, the province has given the town two point two million dollars. So it's pretty straightforward. Auditors give their report on that. So turning back a page, the independent auditors report. It's a clear audit opinion. Uh, we did not have any uh, reservations or qualifications uh, in the uh, audit, and uh, we feel that uh, that expenditure report presents fairly in all material respects the funding and expenditures for the year end. December 31st, 2017. Thank you. Any questions or comments? We have the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle. Is all that the draft federal gas tax funding annual expenditure report and the auditor's report thereon for the year ending December 31st, 2017 be approved? Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? To carry. One is the public sector compensation disclosure schedule. And everybody that uh, every employee that was paid at fifty thousand or more is listed there. And in another two years, the province uh, will bump up the threshold to seventy-five thousand. After however many decades of leaving it at fifty. Do we need a comment from the auditors on that one? No, uh, okay. it, uh, everything is uh, as you see. Okay, the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle, resolved the draft public sector 
compensation disclosure schedule and the auditor's report thereon for the year ended December 31st, 2017 be approved. Discussion? In favor? Carried. Okay. Now we get to the big 39 page one of the consolidated financial statements for the town. I'll just touch on the highlights. So starting with the page five, the consolidated statement of financial position. Just a note on the cash and temporary investments is all the funds and reserves and other entities in which the town controls or has a share in. So out of that uh, 2.4 million, uh, 1.5 is uh, des designated to reserves and uh, 439,000 is held by government partnerships. And their accounts uh, payable and accrued liabilities under liabilities. It's down from last year because last year included uh, 542,000 of debenture installments. The, the venture uh, came into effect in 2016, but the bank didn't take the money out until uh, 2017. So those the venture installments were payable in 2016. Well, the landfill closure liability is uh, estimated. Uh, it was estimated in 2009 that it would cost uh, 1.4 million to close the landfill, projecting that to the estimated year of closing 2086. Uh, it would be 6.6 .6 million because of inflation and the time value of money and discounting back to present time times the capacity of its use, so it's a $44,000 liability. Now, that will grow exponentially the, close, the closer we get to the closing of the landfill. On their long-term debt, there were no new debentures in 2017, but the town has been approved for uh, 250000 for the 6th Avenue lift station upgrade, which is happening in uh, 2018. And uh, firefighter equipment, uh, the debenture was to have uh, come in uh, 2017, but province didn't uh, release the monies until January 29, 2018, but we calculated the interest back retroactive to November 30, 2017. And uh, deferred government transfers, now that, that was the money that came in for the, from the province and the, for the wellness center. And, uh, Public sector accounting standards uh, say that uh, government transfers are recognized as revenue and the eligibility criteria of the net, unless there are stipulations that give obligation to a liability. And so there were stipulations with that grant that it had to be operated in at least two years, or else it's, the grants would have to be paid back entirely to the province. Uh, it's still been operating for two years. And so uh, now only 55% uh, of the grants would have to be paid back if the place is shut down. So that brings 45% of the grants into revenue. So that's uh, $2.6 million that comes into revenue. Now that's that. Uh, Standard is quite a controversial one, and there's inconsistency between provinces as to how to interpret it. But I've interpreted it that since the funding agreement says you have to operate it at least two years or else pay the grants back, I've interpreted that as a liability and you know, recognize that it is revenue as the liability is settled. So since we've passed the first uh, threshold of two years, then. Uh, only 45% of this was payable back if the place is closed down or sold. And so if it's uh, 
continues to be operated till uh, 2025. Then after 2025, it's, the grants are going to be counted up until 2025, the 10 percent of the So that 2.6 million coming into revenue kind of causes what accountants call the bulk effect. Because it's grants towards a capital asset that's being amortized over 40 years. So the cost of the asset is being expensed 1 40th over the next 40 years. But the revenue is coming in a big lump, lump sum on, under P7. But in, uh, they were working on a standard to amortize the grants to revenue over the same period of time as the expense. So then, say you build a $10 million facility amortized over 40 years, it's $25,000 expense a year. You get uh, $8 million in grants. Then if that standard had gone through, you would amortize 20000 to revenue over 40 years, and the net effect would be only 5000 But unfortunately, that standard didn't go through, and so now we have this. So it makes the numbers kind of hard to compare. And so at the bottom of that page, you have financial position is the accumulated surplus, 27.5 million, but of that 27.5, 18.1 is invested in tangible capital assets, 6.5 is in controlled entities and government partnerships, and 1.5 million is held in reserves, so that leaves only 1.2 million in general and utility nominal surpluses. Any questions on that page before I move on? Next page is the consolidated statement of operations. The water and sewer revenue is up from 922,000 to 1.3 million with the new water rates. And we already talked about the wellness center grants, so that you know, grants province of Manitoba is the provincial part and grants other is the federal part of the grants for the wellness center, so that's why those numbers are much higher in 2017 than in 2016. Any questions on that page? No, I think we're good to go to. Commitments there. Let's see what I wanted to highlight was on page 18. At the top of page 18, clean water and wastewater fund contributions. So the town entered into agreement with the province under that uh, fund for the Sixth Avenue lift station. Under the terms of that agreement, the project was to be completed by May 31, which it was. And the total cost of the project was estimated at $1 million. And so uh, the town uh, fits the conditions well, received $750,000 of grants towards that. Only $460,000 was spent uh, in 2017 on towards that project. So the, so the costs will be in 2018. There's also the public transit infrastructure fund for the handyman storage building, which uh, cost 127000 The town uh, is expecting 79200 in grants towards that. And the small communities fund for the hall upgrades which will be happening in this fall. 
the project is expected to cost 50000 and the town should get uh, 33000 from the government, provincial and federal government, towards that project.
that's what I mean when the, this standard uh, makes it not very comparable because it's quite different from 2016 than it was in 2016. So. So then, of course, the general government has a 4.3 million surplus because it includes approximately that the same amount of property taxes that are levied to pay for all these other programs. So I think this is a very useful schedule. Any questions on it? Schedule 5 uh, shows the same as Schedule 4, except instead of broken down by the town, it's broken down by a core government, which is the town, just the town of Swanover itself, controlled entities, which includes the Veterans Hall and the Wellness Center and the Arena and the Handy Van, and then government partnerships, which includes the uh, partnerships that the uh, Town is involved with the other municipalities. The, the towns share of them, like the library and the district recreation, airport commission, planning district. Questions on that page? Schedule six, pages twenty nine and thirty, shows the different reserves that the town has and. The contributions to and the withdrawals from. The equipment money was taken from the equipment reserve to pay for the loader and the sewer jetter. Money was taken from the utility reserve for the 13th Avenue North Water and Sewer Renewal. And of course, money was taken from the Handyman Reserve for the Handyman Storage Facility. Questions on that page? Schedule 8 shows the financial position for just the utility, the public utilities board needs that information separate because they are concerned with the utility. Schedule 9 is the revenues and expenses for just the utility. And the comment I had there is right at the bottom of page 33. The transfers to general operating fund are 13,000. That's because the utility paid for the rebuilding the road on 13th Avenue North after it was dug up to replace the water and sewer lines. That's all I was going to highlight. I tried to put my uh, more comments on all that there. If we had a chance to look through them before, so I'll just leave it yeah. open for any final questions. I'll just turn it over to the auditors. Bruce? Okay, I'll just briefly uh, then uh, touch base on uh, once again. As with the uh, previous two audits, uh, the independent auditor's report, um, it uh, highlights um, what we have audited, what statements we've audited, what management's responsibility is, what our responsibility is, and uh, we believe that um, the audit evidence that we obtain, um, and we certainly uh, thank very much uh, Terry for all his uh, diligent work. Uh, Deanna and I are very uh, thankful that uh, he is um, providing us very uh, meticulous and, and very uh, time-saving uh, information uh, in the performance of our audit. So thanks very much, Terry. Thank you, Terry, and thank you to Bruce. And, and in our opinion, then, these consolidated, and we, they are consolidated financial statements, uh, we feel, in our opinion, they present fairly the, uh, in all material respects, the financial position of the town. Swan River as at its year end, December 31st, and uh, the results of its operations for the year then. 
you, know, you have the motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Sacco. There's all the town of Swan River's draft, there's all the financial statements. The officer's report there on for the year end of December 31st, 2017 will be approved. Discussion? All in favor? Then there are um, also then um, two letters just uh, to briefly go over. Um, the first one being the one page letter, that's supplementary audit report. And it's required by the province of Manitoba. Uh, just indicates uh, that as your auditors, uh, we have reviewed the accounting procedures and systems of control employed by your municipality and report that in our opinion, procedures and systems are adequate to preserve and protect the assets of the municipality. Um, to the best of our knowledge and belief, all funds have been dispersed under uh, authority granted by an act of legislature. Uh, no irregularities or discrepancies in administration of the municipality have come to our attention. And in our opinion, there's no other matters that need to be brought to the attention of council uh, regarding uh, this fiscal year. The, anybody have any questions on that letter? It's a standard annual letter that we're required to submit to the province uh, as your auditors. And the um, the second letter is a is a three page letter, and it basically could be viewed to be uh, a combination management letter, but we call it an audit findings letter, and it just touches base on all of the different things that we uh, looked at during the audit and draws to the attention of those charged with governance, which is council, if we did find anything that needed to be drawn to your attention. Um, so as far as outlining, uh, it starts out letting you know that the audit is almost complete, other than completing our discussions with council, which we are doing right now, and obtaining evidence that council has approved those statements, which you have just done by a, by a resolution. Uh, and then I can sign the audit report, which Terry just gave uh, we did not make, and it highlights the different uh, uh, categories and stages of the audit, we didn't make any changes to our audit plan. We don't have any uh, significant matters that we need to draw to your attention. We didn't encounter any difficulties during the audit. Um, the significant accounting policies that the Thomas One River uh, does use are outlined in note two to the financial statements, which you've already looked at. Uh, we highlight what we consider the significant accounting estimates are and in the audit uh, there are certain things that have to be estimated. One example would be, and we've talked about it in other years, for example the landfill closure liability. There's, there's a number of estimates involved in that but um, uh, at the end we feel that uh, all the significant accounting estimates uh, that have been made by management were satisfied with the numbers. Uh, the only significant financial statement disclosures was about deferred government transfers and Terry discussed in detail the issue about the extra $2 million that hits your uh, financial statement and revenue this year and how that skews the, uh, the results somewhat. But our accounting um, standards require that we reported that. Uh, there were no uncorrected misstatements. In fact, there were no misstatements that we found at all. We did not propose any journal entries. Um, at all in the audit. Uh, we did not identify any deficiencies in internal control and we didn't identify any other matters to draw to your attention at this time. And, uh, I certainly thank uh, not only Terry but the staff, the whole staff here that uh, when Deanna brings the, our audit team over, uh, we're, we're very well looked after and very much appreciated. I think that should cover off the things that uh, we need to cover as well. Thank you very much again. There's no other resolutions.
we'll move on with our agenda. We have uh, under correspondence a letter from the Highway Traffic Board regarding the sign at the Westwood is for your information. Uh, we also have the letter from the Albert Chartrand Friendship Centre regarding their 25th Annual General Assembly. And if councillors wish to attend, send an email or phone them. Okay, I'm looking at that. The other on the traffic board hearing called to cancel the speed limit request. Letter from UCM, basically for council's information. the snow removal agreement there's a draft agreement for snow removal do you want to talk about that uh yeah so mit sent us uh their snow removal agreement i know council instructed us to try and break up main street to to clean from uh ccat muffler to the, the police station but uh mit would would not enter that so they wanted us to take all of main street and 4th Avenue North from RBC to the bridge. So that's what the agreement includes so that we would provide snow removal operations on those portions of the highway within the town. So we would get paid the, the number that was discussed uh, uh, several months ago, $230 a, a centimeter. Uh, I guess it, that's what it is. We, we will get paid that no matter what we do, but it, it, it will be our discretion to to clean Main Street and 4th Avenue North from time to time as the agreement states. So it basically gives us control of when we want to do it. The more we do it, the more it costs us. Whether we break even or not uh, solely depends on how many times we clean Main Street. Uh, there is a, an exit clause uh, as we went over this afternoon there. So 30 days notice from either party this, this uh, agreement can be terminated. So in the case that it's not working out for us or them, a uh, written letter in 30 days and we're back to what we used to have. Any <clears throat> comments from councillors? Councillor Delorean. I, I don't know if this is going to not be received well at MIT, but I'm going to state it for the public record that the agreement does not say they'll continue to wing Main Street on their way out of town. And our whole plan is contingent on that. The local MIT has said they will wing it on the way out of town. If if they somehow don't, it's 30 days notice. So I, I'm in favor of entering into the agreement, and if, if the under portion of the agreement fails to happen, 30 days notice and we're free and clear. Okay, any other discussion? Do you feel it's worth well? I do, I don't think it'll change, I think those the guys will drop their blades on their way out. They told us they would. If they don't, like you say, we can end it in 30 days. And to confirm, based on last year's snowfall, roughly that would have been like a $37,000 20, or 27. It was based on the on an average snowfall of 120 centimeters. Uh, that would that worked out to $27,600. About well, four clearings a year, roughly. Yeah. Councilor Jacobs. So we're talking from the west side of Main Street here, uh, from Valley Bearing all the way to Subway. So that would be more as far as dollars go, right? Uh, no, know we were doing last year. Our trial, our two trial runs this past winter included all the way to Subway. It did. It did. From Valley Bearing. It did from Valley Bearing to Subway. Okay. Because okay. they were they were unable to <coughs> to change that, so we didn't want to know our true costs. Okay. So those costs included all of them. So, so yeah. I, I would just want to make sure that we watch to see what those costs are, because if it is too much, then we may have to back out of it. Then. Yeah. Any other comments? If not, we have the resolution moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Jacobson, whereas Manitoba Highwood 
Manitoba has been has responsibility for maintenance of provincial roads within the Swan River, including snow plowing and snow removal, whereas the town of Swan River is prepared to accept responsibility of snow removal on a portion of the highway, including Main Street South Junction PH10 to 9th Avenue North, Main Street, 9th Avenue and 4th Avenue, Main Street, 4th Avenue to Centennial Drive, 4th Avenue North, Main Street to Veterans Way. Therefore, be it resolved, town entry into agreement with MIT for the maintenance and portions of highways outlined by the agreement as per schedule. Any discussions? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, Superintendent Works Report. Questions to Derek? Derek, I'm sorry, Morris. You got in the engineering section, you said you're asking questions and providing further information to uh, the Public Transportation Infrastructure Fund for the handy van storage. What kind of questions? Like, are they just follow up questions to what was built? And yeah, the, the claim information that was sent in our original agreement, they've updated the sheet. So it's basically, I just have to refill the sheet for the PTIF on the, on the Clean Water and Wastewater Fund. They're asking for further clarifications on the GC's insurance. So I should be getting that tomorrow to send to them. Council Sample. So the garbage truck that the line is using, it's broke down right now? Or has it already been repaired and back going? Because I've seen them driving it today. But. Uh, well, we did give it back to them after a real quick repair, but it does need to be uh, cam, cam shafts and all kinds of, I'm just not a mechanic. I have to get, Josh has written it down, but I have yet to get the full detail on what needs to be done. But I just I have a number from him, basically an estimated cost of four or $5,000 to fix that truck. So in light of that, we kind of, basically gave it to them to drive, to drive till the wheels fell off kind of thing. We didn't really want to put more money into it. Is there an alternative? What, what were they using before? The, the old, the town owned a blue recycle trailer that they would use basically prior to this truck and whenever it broke down. Uh, last year they had refusals from their employees to work on that due to safety problems and issues. But in the end, we, you know, we can't let them have our truck during the day. We did give it to them on a couple days last year, like our newer truck. But do we really want to risk our, we've got one working truck if it goes down. Uh, not only is there going to be cardboard everywhere, there's going to be residential garbage and we will be in real trouble. Do we have a backup plan if that should happen with one truck? Well, right now, Basically, it's renting a truck from Winnipeg, which is going to take us at least three days. But uh, uh, so, in light of that, maybe if we do fix, maybe we shouldn't be letting them use it then. It's putting wear and tear on it when we need it as a backup. I would agree with that 100. percent We should be pulling this truck from them because we, we want we have to provide our service. It's uh, I don't think we ever in. I can't remember when we haven't provided that service. We're paying a pretty high premium for recycling. Yes. Plus we're providing our own vehicle. Yes. Plus our own building. It's like hiring a taxi and providing your own cab. Yeah, say the word and I'll take it away. So maybe the, maybe the, the committee maybe needs to look at what the alternatives are here. I think maybe we can meet with the Lions. Like I know that I'm, you know, they're in a, I don't know. They're they're finan We have gotten financial statements like once from them in the past six years. So it's uh, I don't know. It's tough to say. Can they afford their own truck? Can they afford these repairs? Can they afford to rent them? Can they afford the repairs? We need to ask them because we can't afford. Will you be talking them. with them in the next day or two? Yeah. Okay. I can. Yeah. So I will tell them that the intention is to take this truck away. That's the end goal. Well, if they want to repair it. Until we figure If they want to repair it, I don't know if it would be able for that too. Yeah. Has Josh looked like into like a, a rebuild to see what the cost is for that, if it's cheaper than this amount? Or? He has. He's talked to, to Maxim and he's, I can't remember what they called it. Uh, 
I just I have it written down in my office, but uh, it's around uh, eighteen to twenty thousand dollars for a full engine. Shoot that idea. And that truck is worth right now to two thousand with a gazillion hours on it. That truck is worth fifteen to eighteen. Grand. It's not worth it. It's almost not worth the five grand putting into it. But come to glory. Tell us the story about the uh, landfill scale and weights and measures. Uh, that is, oh, that is just a, a like the brains, the computer box and the yeah. scale. We just had our uh, ProTech come and calibrate the scale, but they've noticed that that box is, is uncertified. So that is something we'll have to get certified right away. So we're talking to weights and measures to come up here to inspect it and certify it. Were they not the ones that sold it to us? Project? No, no, it was a uh, superior prairie or prairie, prairie scale. But Protec is the one that they go around and have to. I signed a check today for a significant amount for damage to a headstone by snowblower. Yeah, we've uh, basically we've we did we hit a, a headstone. We're gonna have to replace it. There's uh, we did look into shaving it off and just redoing the face, but it can't be done. So. We will have to replace the entire headstone for a very significant amount. So due to this, we've created a policy that during the winter, uh, regardless of what block they're in, if they're in a row and they're snow blowing, they have to get out and shovel it because we can't have markers around every time. So this was a mistake. It was a pillow top. It was underneath the snow. Uh, clearly the operators can't memorize where all the headstones are. And, he ran straight into a pillow top head still. So, so did he know he hit it? Uh, he, well, yeah, he knew after. So, so did he put fill out an incident report at that time? We knew the same day. Okay. okay. So, so we contact the family. Just so I can keep it straight in my head, I see we're uh, got a construction room for well site phase two. Phase two is the pit list and all that, that that's getting installed? No, that's still part of phase one. So we still okay. have to connect the discharge to well number four. And who's who's doing the work remaining on phase one? Who's doing that? Lado construction. Okay. The and phase two, which is the switching over the drives and instrumentation stuff like that, hasn't been tendered out yet, correct? We just got sixty-five percent drawings today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure, keep everything straight in my head. What belonged to what? Okay, any other questions? If not, the motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delory, resolve the superintendent works report be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay, Council has the information on the Taylor School radar signs. Any comments? The motion moved by Councilor Delore, second by Councilor Morial. Resolve of Taylor School Radar Speed Sign Report for May 2018 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. We also have the radar sign report from SVRSS and the motion be moved by Councilor Jacobson, second by Councilor Morial. Resolve of the SVRSS Radar Speed Sign Report for May 2018 be received. Discussion? Councilor Friesen. I just want to uh say that's a good thing. All our neighbors are commenting on how slow the traffic is now going down our street. So ask me to pass along. Thank you. All in favor? Carried. Okay. Council has the building inspector report. Any questions to Derek? Not. We have the motion moved by Councilor Jacobson, second by Councilor White. Resolve that the building inspection report uh, be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay, you have the management meeting minutes. Any questions to Derek or Julie? Council member reports. Councillor Sackle. Uh, not too much to report that to you. Nothing at this time. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Morial. Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, this weekend attended uh, Folk Fest for 
couple hours to see what was there and stuff like that. It was the first time I bit one, so it was uh, good to see what was there. Um, also, the personnel committee is uh, meeting with uh, union representation to discuss our labor relations contract, and that's ongoing. Um, and then just a final note is that uh, we have a few complaints regarding park trailers and campers and stuff like that that we're dealing with, um, with the bylaw and stuff like that. So that's all we have. Councillor Deloria. Um, one thing before we my report, one before I forget, on when you're coming up 7 uh, north and you go hit the intersection with Veterans Way, there are big shrubs overgrowing. It's hard to see. Coming up the hill? No, going towards the hill before you cross Veterans Way. Okay. Um, on the trailers, yeah, I, with the amount of time about trailers in the last week, it's been something else. But, you know, found out that parking is... Uh, of various things is regulated in five different bylaws and I understand the administration is going to present us something that will maybe consolidate them or or uh, alleviate some of the confusion. Um, you know the, the specific one about trailers, uh, some of it just really doesn't make sense. We have a clause in there that says 14 days period, seven days consecutive or 14 days period. Well I know tons of contractors around town that have trailers parked on town streets, you know maybe three days at this house, it's four days at this next house for a total of a lot more than 14 days in a calendar year. So, and I mean, I don't think we want to restrict that. That's business in our community. So I don't necessarily see the harm in that. So I think I think our bylaw as it stands is overly uh, narrow and doesn't doesn't allow for, for some of the activities that we want to see while it's trying to, uh, to infringe on some of the activities we don't want to see. Um, so I think we definitely want, we need to look at it. I guess they are what they are for right now, and we have to deal with them as they are right now. Uh, attended the G5, or the G5, the uh, AMM district meeting that we hosted uh, on Friday the 8th. Uh, congratulations to Mayor McKenzie, who was elected as the... Uh, uh, resolutions. The, the what? Resolutions. Resolutions chair, yes, again. Yeah. I thought you said president or something. I'm like, oh no, you did that. Um, and I'm happy to say that we, we defeated the uh, turning back of our uh, clocks. There was a resolution put forward to get rid of daylight savings time. This is nights like tonight are one of the the reasons why we go through with that pain twice a year. The sun's going to be up to 11. Why would we ever want to get rid of that? But uh, those are just uh, a few of the little things we dealt with. Um, other than that, I don't think, we, oh, I guess I spent the last two days in union negotiations, so I'm a little bit frazzled. Don't have anything to report on yet as far as that, but we are, uh, it's definitely uh, a lot of uh, mind bending, a lot, a lot of different ways to look at a lot of different issues. So, uh, anyways, that's it for me. Councilor Jacobson. Uh, for me, kind of like uh, the same here, uh, what I was able to attend the uh, Manitoba High School Association's banquet they invited me to and you know, a lot of work they put into that and uh, I was really appreciative that they invited me out to their to their banquet there and uh, Folk Fest as well for me too last weekend. Congratulations to those people that uh, spent so much time and energy every few years to organize that. It's a great event for the whole community in the valley to come together with all our cultures that we have and to share. I was only disappointed that was, there was no ludicrous there at all for everybody to share. So maybe so that'll be something that they'll consider the next time around. Union negotiations, of course, I have to echo the, the three uh, or the other two councillors with me here today that uh, it is uh, a lot of different work compared to what you deal with on a, on a regular basis in our lives and, and a lot of mind and, and mental things that go through. So it, it's a different wearing anyways, but uh, it's good and we're coming, we're coming around, this is our second wave and uh, uh, who knows where it will go from there, but uh, we're getting there. Thanks. Councilor White. Pretty busy. Uh, we went to uh, June 7th and 8th in the morning for the meeting with uh, Your Worship and other members relative to the possibility of bringing a CT scan to our community. I'm proud with you, sir, and your team for getting the numbers together and working so well with us. And I remain optimistic that that is a reasonable goal. Then at 10 in the morning we had a Paramount Health meeting and uh, updated all the things that are happening in the health world. And one of the things that popped up was the possibility of recruiting physiotherapists to our community. And I can tell you that the foundation is 
the Community Health Foundation was looking seriously at it. Then at 12 o'clock the same day, we went off to Whiskey Sipic for a uh, Craymont Health meeting, and, which was interesting, similar concerns to all of us, of course. And we toured their new health center, which is a beautiful new building. We'll have a couple or three uh, itinerant nurses, maybe one full time. Maybe next time we down and stop it, I'm sure they'd like to show it to you. And the Parkland uh, District AMM meeting, which uh, your report on went well. And June the 13th was Arbor Day, and uh, I want to publicly thank uh, Derek for all the work you did getting it ready and getting equipment there. Uh, the CD, the conservation tester, were a huge help. Uh, they brought in a handful of people, and what well, it took us all parts, uh, better part of a day, I think we did about three hours, two and a half hours. And uh, SPL sent some of their staff over also, I think LP did. And a little disappointed that Mr. Poole bought uh, the old girl's breakfast after, and that's the first time I didn't stay for <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> and I missed it. That's why he bought us. Arbor Day. June the 15th, I went to the MGU barbecue. That was quite interesting. And then negotiations at 7 in the morning yesterday, 8 in the morning. I'm not used to getting up early like that. And I, I agree with my council peers that uh, it's a different process, you know, back, forth, back, forth. And uh, this afternoon, uh, we were starting at 8 with the negotiation. I slipped away for an hour and a half and I went to the University College of the North pitting ceremonies. Uh, where the town, I uh, represented the town and myself as a patient. Uh, MLA's representative spoke, uh, lots of good people. And I think 10 young uh, women in this case graduated, and they will hopefully be available to work in our community, have jobs in our community. So, compliments to UCM for offering those programs to our community, compliments to our community as a whole for providing uh, people, and hopefully they will stay and work in our valley. Thank you. Councillor Friesen. I also attended the June District meeting, um, unfortunately just in the morning, but it was uh, nice to see. Oh, how many was there there? 60 people. It was good. Um, Folk Fest was a booming success. I got to sit at the Canada booth with the Settlement Services crew. Hats off to the volunteers. A lot of work. A lot of work. Uh, Frank Miles, I'm sure, I don't know how the man is able to do all he does. Entertainment was great. Lots from the city. We had uh, Indian dancers, as in India. And um, the Irish dancers, they were all good. Um, the Communities Bloom crew did their planting last week. And uh, the library meeting next week. If someone has a concern with some dead trees or high branches, is it up to them to get up there and cut them down? or? You can call Swan Valley Tree Service. And then they have to pay for it? Yeah. Okay. It, they're boulevard trees, so does that make a difference? There are trees, I think. Right? They Anyone should know? report them to me, yeah. If they're dead, then we... Well, it's an actual live tree, but there's a big dead branch hanging over and you're afraid it's going to fall down. Yeah, they should call me. Okay, well, I have an address, so I'll give it to you after. Yeah. Um, we did have a settlement services meeting a week ago. Um, I just happened to bring this report that Julia makes up. She has 105 contacts with 67 clients. 47 clients are permanent residents, four clients are temporary foreign workers, eight clients are students, eight clients are visitors. Um, last month she had three new clients and she has people from Germany, South Korea, England, Philippines, India, Ukraine, USA, South Africa, and Brazil. So she's a very busy little girl. Um, also, Glenn, congratulations on your 30 year pain. Thank you. Uh, what happened? Well, high school rodeo, I used to part in the opening ceremonies of high school rodeo. What an exciting event, really, that the, the young uh, cowboys and cowgirls with the events that they have lead to future uh, uh, rodeo people. It was pretty exciting. Uh, part of the CT scan proposal, and thank people who uh, help put that proposal together. Uh, we have some work to do. Uh, I was pretty disillusioned to start because they sent uh, a person from uh, Shared Health Manitoba and he was refuting a lot of the things that we're saying, but thanks to Dr. Burnside at the end who made the presentation that the province is changing the way health care is delivered and they're putting in sort of a hub and part of that hub is having a CT scan and the tone changed after to maybe this is an opportune time for us to push forward with that proposal. Also uh, attended a hospital foundation meeting 
I had some people visiting from Iceland, it was Icelandic roots, and doing some research in Canada, and they loved Swan River and they planned to come back. Uh, on Sunday it was at the region, at the Legion, they honored the Hong Kong veterans, and that was a tragedy at the beginning of the Second World War, and there were 24 people from uh, Swan River that were taken prisoner of war during that particular event in the Second World War, and uh, that was pretty touching to have them put that plaque up in the Legion. Also in the arena, Che Genaway, who has roots in the Swan River Valley, his mother and father both worked in the arena at one time. Uh, he played on Canada's Olympic team and he, they put a plaque up with an uh, uh, Olympic jersey signed by the Canadian Olympic team. Yeah, it's kind of interesting and he's also alumni of the University of North Dakota where I also went to school. So uh, things have changed though since 1970 when I graduated. And the Folk Fest, to compliment uh, Frank Miles and Doreen Miles and all the people involved with the Folk Fest. It was pretty, pretty exciting time to be there and I enjoyed it very, very much. Julie. Um, I uh, attended and helped prepare for the AMM Parkland District meeting on Friday the 8th. And um, then sent out invoices and all that need to be done afterwards. And uh, last week I had um, SMS meeting, which is the airport safety management system. Also had a meeting over at uh, the Swan Valley Planet Trading Project office and met with Jack Dick about uh, the work crew as well. Uh, Glenn and I were over at Ferris Hall last week signing some land sale agreements and then we also met with um, Steve Henson and Ross Hanna um, on Thursday afternoon. <laughs> kind of an annual review that uh, they do with us. And then uh, the last two days I've uh, been involved in the union negotiations. And we'll again. So we'll move on to bylaws and resolutions. Uh, the motion to Councillor Deloria, second by Councillor Moro, resulted in bylaw 60 2018 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to maintain and regulate nuisances, derelict, abandoned, and unsightly property be read a second time. Discussion? All in favor? Carry. The motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Deloria. Resolved that bylaw 6, 2018, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to maintain and regulate nuisances, derelict, abandoned, and unsightly properties, be read a third time and be passed. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Jacobs and seconded by Councillor Delore resolved that bylaw 7, 2018, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to establish and operate an emergency firefighting service for fire prevention for the related regulation of fire and other hazards and for adoption of the fire code be read a second time. Discussion? All in favor? We have the motion moved by Councillor Jacobs and second by Councillor Delorier. Resolved that bylaw 7, 2018, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to establish and operate an emergency firefighting service for the fire prevention, for the related regulation of fire and other hazards, and for the adoption of the fire code be read a third time and be passed. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. We have the motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Delore, resolve the following accounts. Uh, as follows, be hereby approved for payment general accounts from check 22589 to 22638 for a total of 372,747.53, and payroll account from check 4235 to 4242 for a total of 113,612.43. Questions to Julie, Councillor Jacobson, Councillor Morio, and Councillor Delore. Check number 22593, Campbell Construction. What's, it says A-Base Supply and Delivery. What was that for? Inventory. Pardon? In, our inventory. 
just our general inventory of ADs. Okay. Councilor Moore, uh, check number 22632 to Pratt's Food Service, which says dishes for the veterans hall. Is that different than what is from the Legion ladies thing? Yes. So These are some new dishes purchased. That this is, so this is an addition, brand new dishes? Yes. Yeah. There were certain items that they didn't have in their inventory that we still required. Well, my question was on on that one too. So the the Legion lady still owns the existing dishes. Do we own all the we dishes. We own now? all the dishes. We own now. all of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I forget who I always forget who's got the puck there because yeah. it's gone back and forth so many times. Um, one other question on uh, two two six zero three library. I know I know what this is for, but we had asked some questions regarding. Uh, some comments that the board had uh, made to us, uh, and what how how they got their meaning. Have we heard anything back? No, uh, Kathy has left me a message, so oh. I've let her know that I'm in meetings for okay. these three days, and that I'll get in touch with her later this week. All in favor of the resolution? It's carried. Okay, we've approved the federal gas tax report already, uh, and. Public sector to close. There is no special, no separate resolution for that. It's part of the uh, uh, financial statements. Sort of collectively responsible. Part of it, collectively a part of it. Yeah, there's a resolution. Um, it's resolution number. 298 for the federal gas tax annual expenditure report. We, we did that already. Did that one? And then there's another one, it's uh, number 299. Uh -huh. I think that one's been done also, too. I don't know how to. It's the public uh, sector compensation. Yeah, we did that all. We did that one. So those are the three that we're doing. We have the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle, resolve the amended Thomas Long River Emergency Plan be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Carry. We have the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle, resolve that the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District May 28th meeting minutes be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carry. We have the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Resolve that Pierre LeBlanc be hired as a casual lifeguard effective June 13th, 2018. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Resolve the Town of Salt River 2018 schedule of fees, rates, and prices be approved. Discussion? Councillor Delory and then Councillor Delory. Um, I don't have a copy of the old one, I guess I could look back, but... It, there's no changes? There's no, okay, because that's what I'm looking, it's usually they're highlighted in yellow. Yeah, it's just that uh, the public works uh, equipment fees got added to the end. That's that's basically okay. it, so... Well, and that's another point of confusion for me, because do we, norm we normally do this like in the fall time, right? Because we'd, al we'd already passed the 2018... Yeah. We, we worked so hard to get all of our departments put together, and I forgot to put my own on there. So okay. we passed the, the, the big, long schedule of fees without the public works fees, and oh. I just got to get it through. Okay. So no changes. Okay. Everything was passed in each... I was very I'm just getting it all on the one schedule. But am I correct that we don't normally do this in the fall time? Yeah. Okay. Councilor Moore. That's been answered. <laughs> Council White. Uh, just a thought for another day. I see we're still charging $25 a tree. And as far as I can tell, we've got way too many trees out there. I don't think changing the price will change that perspective, by the way. But they're big trees, and they're probably be better if you can get them out and make some younger, smaller trees in there before they get too big to move. So I've got maybe something we should take back to, well, to our council to consider changing that price. Okay. All in favor of the resolution? Carried. 
motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Freeze, and resolved that Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce financial statements for the year ended December 31st be received. Discussion? In favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Freeze, and resolved that Council will authorize the payment of the annual grant of $8,000 to the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce, which will be used towards the Chamber's products, projects and operations. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Freeze, and resolved that the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District Municipal Levy for the 2017 2018 fiscal year, the amount of $3,360.46, be approved for payment. Discussion? What was the amount? I'm sorry. $3,360.46. All in favor? The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Freeze, and resolved the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District Municipal Levy for the 2018-2019 fiscal year in the amount of $13,441.82 be approved for payment. Discussion? Favor? Motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle, whereas Public Utilities Board has issued order number 7818, approving the 2016 utility actual operating deficit of 312,786, be recovered through transfers from the utilities accumulated surplus. Therefore, be it resolved that 312,786 dollars be transferred from the utility accumulated surplus to the utility operating fund and expensed as prior year deficit recovery. Discussion. Just uh, to let council know on page four under board findings that uh, they do have a statement in there saying that uh, we're su to submit a rate application to the board no later than June 30th, 2018. That is a mistake, a typo, so we're, we're getting a new uh, order sent that it, it is June 30th, 2019, as in the previous board uh, recommendation during the rates. <coughs> so, All in favor of the resolution? The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Sackle, whereas the 2018 capital budget included $13,500 for firefighter protective equipment to be borne by the fire truck replacement reserve, and such equipment has been purchased at a cost of $14,217.12. Therefore, be it resolved, the $13,500 be transferred from the fire truck replacement reserve fund to the general operating fund. Councillor Morial. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but when we were discussing through the budget process with capital, uh, the proposal was for four turnout gears um, for that and then borne by that reserve. Uh, I see the invoice for the four turnout gears, but there's two additional invoices attached that are for other materials, So, I, which was not brought forward through the capital process. And if the four turnout gear is 11,937, which is less than the 13,500 that's requested. So, like my concern is, if we were asked for four turnout gear to be taken out of reserve, not additional equipment. Now, it's $3,000. We're already yeah, hearing rumblings about the fire department budget. So, like it, do you want to defeat it? It's already been bought. This isn't this isn't to purchase it. This is to transfer the money out of the reserve. So I don't want to defeat it, but I think we need to bring attention to the fact that this was. Oh, the committee's and, meeting tomorrow. And let no, we cancel that. Like I got, I got no issue if that was brought forward at the beginning. That was an additional to that, but were these twenty other items part of it? As part of his operating budget, he just bought them on the same purchase order. Because we shouldn't be taking out of capital, out of, the, out, of, out of those reserves to pay for those if the runner is operating budget. Okay, so uh, Julie, have to ask. You, yeah, you could probably and like he possibly could be defeated, and then this be split up the way that it's supposed to be, and then those other two be taken out of the current. Well, why don't we just pass, pass this for 11937.32? Because that's what was originally 
in, ca in capital was four sets of turnover here. 11 what? Yeah. 11, 9, 3, 7, 3, Just looking at the accounts on the sheets, it looks like the first 1,469 is a capital, because that's a capital account, 93, 22, 7,000. Mm -hmm. And then the, the so second one is, secondary. is an operating account. And you're going to change. In the so one's capital, one's operating. Right. Yeah. Okay. But like, it's still like there's 10. 10 of those hood grade, mm -hmm. 25. Yeah, initial. So we were asking for turnout gear. Yeah, so th this maybe he had budgeted for in right. his operating budget. Exactly. Just to so that shouldn't come out of the reserve. No. I guess I should confirm that with Darren, just from what I see. Well, the, if, if it's something different, we can pass another resolution taking out the rest of the 13.5. So the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle, whereas the 2018 capital budget included 11,937.32 for fire protective equipment to be borne by the fire truck replacement reserve fund, and such equipment has been purchased at a cost of 11,937.32. Uh, be it resolved that the 11932 be transferred from the fire truck res replacement reserve fund to the general operating fund. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Sackle, was all the following transfers budgeted in the 2018 financial plan be made from the general operating fund to general reserve $2,500, to machine the equipment reserve fund $150,000. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Jacobson, to resolve the East Lundella Health Facilities Foundation April 2018 minute meetings be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Memorial, second by Councillor Jacobs, and resolve a letter of resignation attached as for Schedule A, B, or C. Discussion? All in favor? Carry. Motion moved by Councillor Memorial, second by Councillor Jacobs, and resolve that Glenn McKenzie and Lance Jacobson be authorized to attend EMO Public Information Officer Media Training held in Brandon June 27th and June 28th. Discussion? All in favor? The motion moved by Councillor Deloria, second by Councillor Morrow, resolved that borrowing from the Royal Bank of Canada for up to $500,000 be approved to allow for the overdraft as may be required from time to time. Discussion? Yeah, what's this for? Do we, we haven't had an overdraft in the past? No, we haven't, but we have a situation today where we realize that we need one at this time of year because we are, our bank account really gets depleted before the taxes start coming in. And then Derek had, in his department, had a very large check go through. So thank you to uh, Derek and Terry uh, for, you know, for looking into that situation and making these arrangements. The, and, and I think it's a good idea that we do have an overdraft in place uh, the for these types of situations. Yeah, the, the details and fees Terry knows, I should have asked the details, but uh, we dealt with that this afternoon. Because we, the, the, I'm sure Terry will tell you guys, but we have one bank account, right? Yeah. Um, so it's a, uh, it gets depleted, especially with the uh, with the late L construction check that went out, uh, it depleted it, and we have payroll checks to be made and other checks. So we just didn't want to be in a position where anything was bouncing. And this time of year, it's always this way, but just because he had some very large checks go through, it's. It, it brought to our attention that this could happen, so we should have an overdraft in place. And it's it's not something that we will have to use, probably, I'm hoping never, but it's there just in case. Yeah, previous to this, the, the lowest that account's ever been was 600000 <clears throat> How low did we get today? 50000 50, All in favor? Moved by Councillor Laurie, seconded by Councillor Morrill, 
whereas the Manitoba Electoral Boundaries Commission has produced a 2018 interim report, and whereas changes proposed in this report include the Town of Swan River being part of a new electoral division within the City of Dauphin, which would be detrimental to the residents of Swan River, as issues of provincial concern facing a small town can be very different from those faced by a city. And due to the nature of the population base in the proposed electoral division, the issues of a small town may very well be overshadowed by that of the City of Dauphin. And whereas the town of Swan River is part of the Swan Valley, which is a geographic area that self-identifies as one large community within common interests, goals, common identity, economic trading area, and school division, which also includes the municipality of Swan Valley West, the municipality of Minnetonas Bozeman, the town of Swan River, and the rural municipality of Mountain, Changes proposed in the report include having the northern boundary of the electoral division coincide with the northern boundary of the municipality of Swan Valley West, which would cause the northern portion of the Iron Mountain to be located in a different electoral division. These changes would have the effect of cutting a significant portion of the Swan Valley off from having common representation, thereby degrading the cohesion of our community and communal identity. Therefore, be it resolved, the town of Swan River strongly disapproves of the proposed electoral district boundary changes and believes that any proposed boundary change should leave the Swan Valley as a whole intact in one electoral district. Further, be it resolved, the town of Swan River sent a delegation to the public hearing on the proposed boundaries uh, being held in September 13, 2018 in Dauphin. Discussion? Yeah, I guess I gave you guys notice last week that I'd be bringing a resolution like this forward. I think the, the proposal is nothing but bad news for our, for our uh, Great pairs, and I think we need to voice our voice our opposition to it. Um, so I hope that you guys will all vote in favor. And I think we all know the reasons why we, we have such good access to our MLAs. It didn't matter which party was in power; we've had great representation. Um, so I I fear I, I guess you don't want to fear change, but I don't. We had the we have history with uh, healthcare being out of Dauphin, and we all know how that went. Um, it just just would not be a good thing for us. So I hope you go in favor. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay. We have the motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Morio, resolved that pursuant to section 152.3 of the municipal act, council go into the committee and close the meeting to the public. All in favor?